So we look at 10% and 20% of corn silage in dry matter basis for the calves from the fourth week on. And it was, it was really good when we had the 10% inclusion rate. The calves had um, higher solid feed intake, total solid feed intake. It was nice to see that um, the intake of non-fiber carbohydrate was increased. So when you feed more fiber, there is an increase in total dry matter intake and non-fiber carbohydrate is um, improved. Everybody. Welcome to the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. I'm Todd Calloway and we're I'm really excited to be part of this and we're dedicated to bringing you the latest insights and discussions in dairy nutrition research. So we've got a great guest today, so get ready to expand your knowledge and stay ahead with today's episode. And please like if you enjoy this episode. So today we have uh, Dr. Carla Batar from the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. And I followed her work for many years, and we were discussing earlier that we've met each other, but we've kind of read each other's stuff for years. And she's done some really great work with calf nutrition that she'll tell you about. So welcome, Carla. It's really great to have you here. And, you know, will you tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, how you came to be doing dairy nutrition research? Thank you for having me, Todd. It's a pleasure. Um, I... I um, I grew up in São Paulo city, so big city with a lot of buildings, and um, I I went to a dairy farm to be like a monitor of kids during summer camp, and I enjoy so much being around cows that I I thought I could work with this forever, and. I came to the countryside of the Sao Paulo State to have my, my bachelor degree in agronomy. And after graduation, I had this opportunity to, to uh, do my master with Dr. Huber at the University of Arizona. So I was the calf lady, the crazy calf lady there. <laughs> All the, all the guys were working with uh, dairy cows, lactating dairy cows and, and grain processing. And I was looking at um, monensin and the decox used to dairy calves to decrease diarrhea. And when I finished, I came back to Brazil and, and pursued my PhD, uh, working with grain processing for baby calves. It was very uh, very new thing in Brazil to have grain processing. And, and after that, I continue working. I start as a researcher at Embrapa. It's a kind of USDA we have here. And after that, I was hired by the university to continue uh, research with dairy calves. So I have been working with this since, maybe since my, my undergrad. So can you tell us about the research that we were talking about with this uh, calf and corn silage? Yeah, um, I always was um, curious about the recommendations we have in a lot of techni technical texts uh, saying that calves could not receive fermented um, forages. Even though there is this recommendation by a lot of consultants and technicians, every farm we go, we can see calves being fed corn silage in Brazil. And we have this very big essay, like the, the NEMS essay you have there. We have a big one here. And 60% of the farmers feed corn silage to um, pre-weaning calves. So I was curious, like, why everybody's saying we cannot do, but the farmers are doing it with success. So let's look at this. 
Um, together with this, I had this very interest in understand more the fiber requirement for um, pre-weaning calves, because I think that we have been neglecting um, fiber for calves for so many years because of all those pictures from the Ohio State. So um, I, I thought about a, a TMR feeding skin for the, the, the pre-weaning calf, and we look for different um, inclusion rates. So we look at 10% and 20% of corn silage in dry matter basis for the calves from the fourth week on. And it was, it was really good when we had the 10% inclusion rate. The calves had um, higher solid feed intake, total solid feed intake. It was nice to see that um, the intake of non-fiber carbohydrate was increased. So when you feed more fiber, there is an increase in total dry matter intake and non-fiber carbohydrate is um, improved, the, the intake is improved, and this may be beneficial to rumen development. Um, and there was no, not like a lot of differences in performance. So it, it, is, it is good, we can use it up to 10%, we will increase uh, total solid feed intake, uh, uh, especially uh, around weaning. And this is, is good for the transition of the calves from pre-weaning to post-weaning. Um, and, and there was no negative effects for performance. So everything worked really nice. And after the performance trial, we had this, um, this trial with um, behavior and, and metabolic differences and everything pointed in, in favor for 10% of corn silage in a TMR. Okay. <clears throat> so you mentioned you know, that we've neglected fiber a lot in calves. So what do you think our fiber requirement actually is for a calf? I don't know. I was waiting I was waiting nothing to tell me what is the recommendation. <laughs> the only clear recommendation we have, very clear, is a recommendation in the book of Davis and Dreckley saying that we need like 15% at minimum 15% of NDF for calves uh, pre-weaning. But there is nothing regarding to, well, is this NDF from forage or not? So can I just use like soybean hulls or do I need to put um, chopped hay? I don't know. So we need to study more of this. Yeah, that brings up that concept that you used in, that, in your paper on physically effective NDF. Mm -hmm. And yeah. how that ties to that starch availability, because you mentioned those pictures from Penn State and Ohio State, how they used the high grain and got a lot of uh, papillae growth. And I mean, corn silage obviously has some starch to it as well. So, you know, I think you're, you might be finding the best of both worlds with that. This this one was one of the hypotheses that we could have a forage with some starch together. So the, the energy intake could be less damaged because of a replacement or a substitution of concentrate by, by the forage. Um, and, and it seems to work really nicely However, the silage we had that time was not so good. We can have a better silage to, to feed the calves. But it, it was good to see that the calves were eating with appetite. And this is sometimes a problem also because sea calves will not eat solid feed. 
So it was good to see that all the calves were eating, um, regardless of the, the inclusion rate, even the calves with 20% were eating a lot of silage, well, a lot of TMR. And um, it, it seems that, that we can um, improve the, the feeding of these calves mainly during the transition from pre to post weaning to, to have calves more prepared for the, the next phase. When, when we had the first results, a lot of producers were like, oh, but calves prefer to eat hay. They don't like silage. They prefer to have hay in the diet. So we had another paper comparing this. So we took the best inclusion rate of silage, the 10%, and compare with hay of two qualities, a medium quality and, and a low quality. And there was no difference among the, the forage feedings. So it was really good. All of them improve, again, total dry matter intake, um, rumination time, chewing time, and there was uh, improvement regarding to um, rumen fermentation profile and even increase in, in beta hydroxybutyrate. There is an indicator of rumen development. It doesn't have to be this hard to keep cows pregnant. At Virtus Nutrition, we understand the negative impact that lost pregnancies have on a dairy's economics. Every failed pregnancy means more money spent on expensive semen, additional replacements to raise, and fewer valuable beef calves to sell. Feed what embryos need. Strata with EPA DHA, the pregnancy nutrient. Okay, well that kind of leads me to my next question. If you were a dairy producer, what's the best forage for your calves? Oh, well, it depends of my, um, my know-how on silage production because I'll, a, a very uh, frequent question I receive is that, oh, but what do I do if I have a bad corn silage? And I, I answer, well, this corn silage is not good for your cows also. So it's not a matter that you have to have the best silage for the calves. You have to, be, to have better silage for all the herd. So you first need to improve your corn silage um, production. And when you have a very good silage, you can go ahead and feed the calves. But the thing in Brazil is that all the farms will have corn silage but very little farms will have hay. So it's much easier for them to um, adopt a forage feeding if they can feed the silage. Excellent. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Well, I appreciate you being on here and you know, you've done some really great work that makes me think a little bit differently because I don't, again, always heard don't feed silage to calves. So, yeah, this kind of is, cha is changing that dogma, which is always a good thing. So thank you for sharing that with us. So every <clears throat> everyone, that concludes another episode of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. So thank you for joining us today. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast to stay updated on future episodes. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please leave us a review. Your feedback really helps us. And if you have a suggestion for a new guest or a new topic, please leave a comment. So until next time, this is Todd Kelly from the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast signing off. Thank you and have a great day.